Up next, we have Yancy Ribbons, Tech at Nagios. Give him a big round of applause. All right, thanks, guys. <coughs> Can anybody hear me? Hear me okay? Is the mic on? Okay. All right. Well, let's get started. <coughs> so. Today I'll be talking about agent deployment, and this is going to be uh, based on a new tool that's been developed. Um, it's uh, kind of a, been a brainchild of mine for some time now. <coughs> um, just some background, um, I started at Nagios about one year ago today, and so my first uh, week on the job was actually at the first world conference last year. And from the presentations that I attended, this seemed to be a real hot topic. Um, basically, how do we deploy agents? How do we configure them um, from, from the Nagio side without um, a lot of prereq pre and a lot of um, groundwork um, as far as uh, deployments go? So that kind of spurred the idea of what are some of the ways we can tackle this. Um, so in this presentation today, I'm going to discuss um, how we can deploy NS client. Um, this is templated on 0 0.3.9, which is the current stable release. Um, we'll also look at how we could deploy the 0 0.4 version for those interested. Um, so when it's deployed, uh, we'll look at different configuration options, such as configuring NRPE, configuring check NT, pushing updated config files, running the uninstaller. Um, we're also going to take a look at some of the blueprints as far as how this whole thing's put together and how we can customize recipes for future uh, deployments. Okay, so um, probably most of you are familiar with the uh, concept of agents, but just real quick, they're useful because they allow us to gather metrics such as CPU, memory, disk usage. Um, agent software on the client side is very useful because we can run custom scripts to basically monitor <coughs> any type of um, custom environment settings we might have. And we also have some examples here of what agents might be, such as check NRP, <coughs> check NT and NRPE, as well as NRDS Win. So some of the current solutions out there for deploying software, um, for example, Microsoft SCCM, um, it's a uh, Pretty resource intensive. There's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> Requires you to have DNS, uh, domain controller, um, WSUS in some instances, um, etc. Um, there's also Puppet, which um, I haven't actually used, but I know it's very popular amongst the, uh, the Linux environment. Um, but from what I've looked at for Windows deployment, there is still a lot of setup, and you'd also need to deploy some software to the Windows machine first before you can start <coughs> pushing your agent software. Okay, so, so why is NPush so great? Well, this solution requires no client-side configuration. Um, it allows us to just template agent installs. So we can create one template and use it over and over again uh, for many clients. And obviously we can deploy agent software remotely. Okay, so some of the other benefits, um, it's built directly into Nagios XI, and we've already talked about that. Okay, so <coughs> so some of the really cool things that um, NPush uh, can do, and we'll see a demonstration of this. Um, after running NPush um, from within XI, um, in this demonstration, it's going to build the INI for, file for us. So it's going to build the nsc.ini file. It's going to automatically populate in the IP address of the Nagio server. Um, we're also going to enable use file option. And it's going to randomly generate a, a password. And then we can take that password and plug it into our check NT wizard as we're running it on the Nagio XI side. So let's take a look at how that interaction will look.
Okay, so here's the um, check, uh, the end push interface on the right hand side here. And then on the left pane is a remote uh, Windows 2008 machine. So basically I'm populating the IP address of uh, that Windows machine along with a valid username and password. And the check NT option was um, selected. So basically all the requirements for monitoring with check NT are basically templated in. So once the install finishes, it presents the randomly generated password. And we'll be looking at how you can actually set your own password if you'd like. So if you caught it, NS Client now appear, is appearing in the program files list of this remote agent. And so now I'm just going through the uh, check NT um, install wizard. <coughs> and I'm just using the generated password that was created uh, via NPush. And we're just keeping the default settings the same. So now we're basically waiting for the check data to come in. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm showing the different sections that um, NPush um, generated in this INI file before deploying it to the client. Um, and basically here's all the, the DLLs that um, have been uncommented for this deployment. And we'll, we'll be looking at actually what the, the template looks like um, before this is deployed. So this takes some time to come back, so let's fast forward a little bit. And as you can see in the right, the um, check data is populating from check NT. So that was pretty cool. So how do we actually, if we wanted to do, say, so let's say we want to use our NRPE installer. Um, NRPE is nice because you can do things like run external scripts. Um, NRPE um, uses SSL. Uh, so it's a, in that manner, it's a bit more secure than CheckNT. Um, so basically, here's all of the common settings that it enables in the INI file. So enable SSL, it defaults the port, um, enables uh, command argument processing, allow meta characters, populates allowed host IP with the Nagios IP, um, enables use file, and also enables the common modules for check NRPE. Okay, so basically I'm just trying to um, query the check NRPE daemon from the, uh, from the shell here. And as you can see, no, no data was returned. So uh, once again, I'm pulling up my remote host and I'm gonna populate the IP address, username and password. And you can see the different actions associated with, with these two, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so the NRPE wizard ins is installing. So basically it's pushing over the MSI package, um, running the installer, copying over the config INI file and starting up the service. And you can see I just did check NRPE-H and now it's accepting connections. 